trash. gonna paint the water bottle today. Ooh, look how you can kind of see through towards the islands. So I'm gonna show it, show you how to prepare it for painting. So I brought with me some recycled water, just using a hot, <laughs> extra hot McCormick bottle. Not sure if that's salsa or whatever, but easy glass bottle and I just recycle water use it over and over again and it's easy to transport all right I have my paint palette I painted the other day and then sealed it in this foil uh, and it's actually still wet boop, boop, boop. so it preserves the paint for a little bit longer so you don't waste paint got some brushes for painting all right, so this is kind of my setup, just sitting around. This is my view, not bad. Found the water bottle just down there. I'm gonna use white to prime it, uh, but for painting, I like to stick to basically primary colors. So red, yellow, we got a cool blue and a warm blue. Sometimes I use this yellow ochre color and then green if you're feeling sassy, but you don't have to, and then white. Uh, so I like to stick to the basics because that's what all the colors are based around. And I'm going to start by sanding this water bottle. That way the paint adheres to it a lot more easily. A lot of things that you find marine debris related are slick and slippery, hard to grasp onto. So you want to, by sanding the items, um, it provides a surface that the pure, that the paint can adhere to a little bit easier so things don't chip off later. It looks like the, the beach itself just kind of tumbling around there has worn it down pretty good but now it's always good to sand the next and these. So this is also a good place to think about what orientation you want your object to be. Do you want it to be this way, this way, this way, sideways? I'm probably leaning towards this way. And I really like to leave my bottle painted on one side and then unpainted on the other so that you can tell that it's a water puddle. But that's totally up to you. That choice is yours. All right, so now I'm gonna start priming. And I start priming with white, just so there's a base color. Boop. Boop. Just go, do, 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 and just go for it. Kind of goop it on. And depending on the texture of the object, you can do one layer of priming or two or three or four, however many you need. Usually I like to stick to one prime and then I lay a ground, which I'll show you next. All right, so I painted my first layer. You can kind of see how you can see through it a little bit. So that's why it's easy or a good idea to maybe do a few layers or you can keep one layer if you kind of like that effect being able to see through it yeah 
Yay. So the paint has just about dried. It's a muggy day out, so it's slow drying. But the next step is to think about a ground color. And a ground color is the color that you lay down before you start painting the landscape for real or painting whatever you'd like for real. So usually what I do is I paint a base color that is the opposite of the color that I'm trying to paint, the majority that I'm trying to paint. So in this case, the majority of the landscape, seascape, is blue. So I'm going to lay a ground, lay a base color that is orange. If you look on the color wheel, blue and orange are opposite of each other. And this allows the, the orange to kind of pop through the painting and kind of ignites it almost. So I'm going to use this yellow ochre color and crimson red. So yellow and red is good. Mix in some other colors if you want. Uh, and that'll make the landscape look like it's moving because it is. Look at those waves moving. The wind is whistling. This isn't a stagnant landscape. It is constantly moving and we want to show that in our paintings. Do, do, do. Just kind of mix those colors up and then add them on. See the whites blend in a little and that's okay. This is going to make a solid base for the painting we're about to create. Yay! So after you get to this point, you are free to do whatever you choose. I like to paint the horizon first. So that's that line first. And then you draw or paint the farthest thing in the distance, the background, work towards the middle ground. And then finally, the most detailed things, are the things right in front of us, the foreground. And that's how I make my paintings. I'm a, drawn to landscapes, but you do not have to limit yourself to that. You can paint animals or people or something abstract, something that you're inspired by the coast, and then just go for it. You are literally making the world more beautiful by painting to protect it.